of international reputation of scientific articles. In this lovely moment, I would like to say welcome to our today's speaker, Assistant Professor Dr. Isara Siramanirat from Faculty of Liberal Arts, Raja Mangala University of Technology, Tanya Buri. To our second speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Nurjazuli SKM Mkes, Faculty of Public Health, Diponegoro University. Selamat siang, Pak Nurjazuli. Selamat siang. The Honorable Dean of Faculty Public Health of Diponegoro University, Dr. Budiono SKM Mkes, and also to all of our respected guests and participants. First of all, let us say thank you to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who has been giving us mercy, guidance, and happiness, and also healthy so we can attend and participate in this event without any obstacles until now. Praise and salutation upon to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the last messenger, the best figure of this universe. On this special afternoon, we have uh, several agendas. So please allow me to read several sequences of our agenda, which is will be uh, the first is speech from the Dean of the Faculty of Public Health of Diponegoro University. The second is the academic scientific writing from Assistant Professor Dr. Isara Siramanirat. The third is selecting suitable journal for publication from Associate Professor Dr. Nurjazuli SKM Mkes. And last but not least, uh, we will have discussion for uh, the second session. So um, actually the second speaker was originally will be brought by the deceased Ibu Dr. Prabha Ginanjar, SKM MDMAT. She was a very good researcher and lecturer at the same time. Um, she had published many articles. However, uh, she had passed away last week. Um, may all her acts of worship will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and was forgiven for all her sins. May her rest in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all take a moment to pray for her and also to pray for the successfulness of this event. Praying begin. Praying ended. Thank you very much for the prayer. Today's training is followed by participants from all around Indonesia, but mostly is from uh, Faculty of Public Health of Diponegoro University. Um, I can see that we now have like 48 participants right now online. And so um, by reciting Bismillah, uh, the training of international reputation of scientific article is begin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Our dearest participants, let us get into our first session. Please welcome to the Honorable Dean of Faculty of Public Health of Diponegoro University, in this case that will be represented by the first Vice Dean and please to also willing opening this event to Dr. Nur Jazuli SKM Mkes. The screen is yours. Yeah. Oke, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you very much for Miss Isra uh, from uh, Raja Manggala University of Pedagogi of Tanjaburi. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon. Yeah, welcome to our webinar and yeah. yeah, pelatihan penulisan reputas uh, Artikel ilmiah reputasi internasional. I'm sorry, uh, I speak in bahasa. Uh, pada Bapak Ibu yang hadir di kesempatan saya hari ini, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, saya mewakili Pak Ekan karena Pak Ekan sedang menguji di S3 untuk membuka acara ini. Nah, karena itu pertama-tama uh, kita Menjadikan puji syukur kepada Allah Subhanahu Taala di siang yang cerah ini kita diberikan kesempatan untuk uh, menimba ilmu ya, mengenai penulisan artikel ilmiah pada jurnal berikutasi dengan pembicara uh, Miss Isra ya, dari Thailand. Ya. <tuh> Karena itu sekali lagi. Uh, mari kita menjadikan puji syukur atas 
kekuatan, kesehatan yang diberikan kepada kita sehingga kita bisa bergabung di acara ini. Yang kedua, salawat serta salam semoga tercurahkan pada junjungan besar kita Nabi Muhammad SAW yang kita nantikan syafaatnya di Yaumil Qiyamah. Bapak Ibu sekalian, terutama partisipan, jadi kenapa acara semacam ini, ini sangat penting dilakukan? Karena menurut saya ada dua hal. Yang pertama, undip itu mengemban ya, tiga hal. Yang pertama adalah sebagai PTNBH, kemudian yang kedua sebagai riset university, kemudian yang ketiga sebagai world class university. Ya, yang terkait dengan ketiga ini sebagai world, cut, world class university CT itu salah satu indikatornya adalah aktivitas akademik yang bereputasi internasional. Nah, kegiatan siang ini merupakan bagian menurut saya dalam rangka mendukung capaian World Class University. Yang kedua adalah bahwa pesertanya ini kan terutama untuk mahasiswa pasca sarjana S2 maupun S3, di mana mahasiswa ini punya kewajiban untuk publikasi di jurnal internasional bagi mahasiswa S2, kemudian Jurnal Bereputasi Internasional atau Perindeks Opus ya, atau yang setara bagi mahasiswa S3. Sehingga langkah ini adalah untuk memberikan bekal pengalaman kepada uh, mahasiswa pasca sarjana khususnya baik S2, S3 dalam rangka mempersiapkan sebuah manuskrip artikel yang ya reputable ya uh, uh, publishable di jurnal internasional. Oleh karena itu, saya sampaikan banyak terima kasih pada partisipan, khususnya yang berasal dari masa S2 dan S3, ya, beberapa orang ada dari S1. Ya. Saya hargai semangat Anda, motivasi Anda untuk mengikuti pelatihan ini. Oleh karena itu, sekali lagi, eh, mari kita ikuti eh, cara pelatihan ini dengan sebaik-baiknya dan sampai selesai, karena ini adalah suatu momen yang mungkin jarang dan kesempatan yang baik sayang sekali kalau ditinggalkan sehingga saya mengharapkan semua partisipan untuk bisa mengikuti sampai dengan akhir acara ini tentu pasti ada nanti pengalaman baru atau trik baru yang bisa diaplikasikan buat peserta mahasiswa pasca maupun doktor dan S1 ya, dalam rangka untuk publikasi internasional oleh karena itu atas izin Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, kemudian atas izin Bapak Ibu semua, Bapak Ibu dosen, mahasiswa, mari kita mulai acara ini dan acara pelatihan penulisan artikel ilmiah pada jurnal Reputasi Internasional ini saya nyatakan dibuka. Demikian sambutan dari kami ada kurang dan lebihnya mohon maaf yang sebesar besarnya. Bila taufik walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waktu saya kembalikan kepada pembawa acara. Monggo Pak Nafi. Oke, okay. terima kasih banyak Pak Nur. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Nur Jazuli, SKM Mkes, for the speech and also opening the this event. Um, As he said that uh, this training is actually to uh, train us and to um, what is it to improve our skill in uh, writing articles and also to add some more of uh, the publications, especially for the Faculty of Public Health of Diponegoro University. Thank you very much. And um, it is now my pleasure to introduce our um, guest speaker. Our first speaker is. Um, Sorry, <laughs> Assistant Professor Dr. Isara Siramanirat. Uh, she is um, a lecturer from the Faculty of Liberal Arts, Raja Mangala University of Technology, Tanya Buri. Um, she was graduated from the Mahidol University um, as the Doctor of Philosophy in 2015. She also had a Master of Arts from Chulalongkorn University in 2010, and she had Bachelor of Arts in Sociology and Anthropology from Kasetsart University in 2008. She also had so many publications here in English and also in Thai. 
I cannot mention one by one because uh, really this is so much. <laughs> so please to uh, Ajan Isara Siramanerat, Assistant Professor, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, and good afternoon again for everyone that just come in and just before. And first of all, I would like to thank to the Dean of the Faculty of Public Health, Undip University, that invite me to become to be the speaker today. And I feel really grateful that I have the opportunity to share the experience about writing for all of you today. Actually, I have been go to Indonesia three or four times. I have I went to the Bali, yes, and also I went to the um uh what's uh Tuk Jakarta uh Tuk Jakarta and also um what's it called Bromo Bromo ah uh, about about four four or five times and also and up until now even already past two or three year I still feel impatience about your scenery and your nature there is. Actually, in Thai also have, but if cannot comparable if comparing to Thai, because you are the most beautiful scenery, better than us a lot. And I have been write the story books about six until seven books public in Thai since since um to, um ten 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 of ten or two years ago. So um, I use that talent and, and I use that experience to apply when I'm writing the article research. After that, I become the lecturer, right? I still have that talent and have the experience to writing the beautiful article research and public in the easy way. And today, today I will share some, share some tricks and some experience that I got to you. And then I hope that you, it will be helpful for you. And also in the future, I also really hopeful that we can join the writing, co-writing together. I will be really, really pleased to write, to work with you. And if some of you, um, some of you have the paper that want me to help to um, modify, make it more look um, smooth, uh, you, you can send to me in the future. So. So I will lovely because I love to write and love to read. So you will not hesitate to send to me. Okay. Uh, let me share the. Ah, oh, and doing um, doing um present and if I'm speak too fast for you to catch up, you you can, I don't know, you can raise the hand here or you can you can, sound sound me to warn me that it's too fast for you. Um, Pardon, okay. Ajahn Isara. Maybe I can announce to the participants that uh, they can uh, submit the existing manuscript or article if they already have and to discuss at the end of your session. So uh, yeah. I have already uh, shared uh, in the chat room uh, so all the participants can uh, present uh, what yeah, presents there and also submit the existing article that they have. So if they would like yes. to discuss with you yes. at the end of your yes. session, uh, we can open yes, it and, yes. and discuss it together. Yes, yes. I, I actually, actually, um, Dr. Fali said that they will have some of the papers sent to me before the trainings, but uh, up until now, I, I saw only one. So maybe today I can comment only one, one paper first. Only that. Okay, thank you. Very and much. and you, you you see my slide or not? Or, or you you see my slide? Yes, it is visible, oh, okay. but uh, on my screen it's all only like half of the screen. I don't know why. How of the screen? Yes, only yes? half of uh, left. Yes, only half half left. Mm -hmm. okay. The half right is I don't know where. <laughs> yes. You are in trying scheme. I'm not sure. I think it's still half of the screen. Can, ladies, can? No. Still half. 
No, I don't know why. Too. Actually, I already yeah. tested the system before. At before it's good. Okay. Yes. When when the action come is not good now. <laughs> no. Maybe may I help to share the PowerPoint? Okay. Okay. And then I have to send okay. you which way. I already have yours, but I don't know if it's the latest uh, the latest file or not. Uh, I, I will send to Mr. Farid, okay? Oh, yeah, sure. You cannot just be the papers. You have now, right? Can you see it? Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, and it's really real that, but you will change for me, right? Okay. Okay. This, this. Oh, this one skip is okay. Skip is okay. Skip to the next slide. Right? Okay, first of all, um, they have three rules that you have to keep in your mind when you will start to writing the article. Um, first rule that you have to know that the reader will read very swiftly, very, very fastly. So every sentence that you will put inside the document should be important. It means what? It means that it should be the outstanding key point should be the our standard point that you want to put in it. And the second thing that you have to keep in your mind is we will no room for ambiguity. The confusing words, the word that makes the reader feel complicated when you read it, should be cut it out. And the last thing before you will writing, you have to keep it is most of the reader who read your article is not a native English speaker. So, my, some of my colleagues say to me that when you write the paper, you have to write with the difficulty word or you, with the complicated word. But for me, in my techniques and also in my own perspective, I think that the good article is not mean that it's hard to read or you use the complicated word. The good article is easy to understand. You use the easy word, you use the easy um, sentence that easy to understand, can touch the reader. That is the importance of the article. So before we move on, the three things that you have to keep in mind that every sentence that you have to put in the paper should be very important. Important, every sentence. Because you know, right? We have the count limit when you're writing the paper. We have the limit like a 3,000 words, 4,000 words. So you cannot put everything in your report inside the paper. So every sentence important. Second, don't use the confusing words. The word that makes uh, ambiguity have to cut it out. Thus, every time you write, you have to write down as if the reader are not native speaker who read it. So use the simple words. Okay. And, and actually, everyone, they have their own style. Some of my friends write to read, uh, write to love to write the article that elaborate a lot. Some of one love to write, cut off the point. It depends on their own style. I cannot judge that oh, which style is better, which style is better than this one. No. But they will have a general rule that you have to remember when you write it regardless your style, okay? First, this, key, this keyword is really important. Short sentence express single concept. What it means? The idea of the sentence, if you have only one, better you expand only one sentence. Don't try to erase more than one or two sentence because it's what? Because it will make, it will make too long for your paper and try to use the short paragraph. The important thing is that you already know is about the gamma order. 
you have to try to check. And if you doubt it, try to keep it in simple and try to check the gamma that is already collects or not. Yes. Yeah. Better, better I will change it by myself or not. No way. Okay. And I'm I'm have a trick for you that I always use when I'm beginning to write down my paper. First is I try to read out loud. After I finish to writing the paper, right? I will binge my paper and then I read it out one by one. And if I feel that it's stuck in some contents or if stuck in some text. So it means that something wrong in the sentence. So I will re rewrite again and I will read back to read again. I will did it like that, repeat it to see to see that they have our sentence is already smooth so I can pass it. The second tip is is if when you want to collect your paper or after you finish to writing down, right? You want to collect your text, right? Don't do it in one time. Because it will be makes it will cause more mistakes if comparing you do by little little. I suggestion do that. I suggestion that you do it by little. You read it once, paragraph, and you fix it. And after that you left it. You go to watching, you go to cleaning the car. And then you come back to read another paragraph. Don't try to fix it one time because if you cause the mistakes, then, then, then you know it. And the last one is maybe you will you get your friends surround you or your close friend to read your works. Should be the friend that don't have any knowledge in your field before. Maybe you select two of your friends. One is familiar with your fields and then let, let he read it. And another one is someone that works in another field. He don't know anything about your research before and then let he read it and see that he understand or not. So the tip that I use at the beginning when I'm first writing is first I read loudly. After finish, I repeat, I read it and see that is it smooth or not. And the second, I try to find that, um, wait now. Okay, sorry, they have the construction here. And then, and then so the, the last tip is you have to give your friend or some of your friends that are not related with your fields, list your work. So, but don't try to, I mean, serious too much because, because you have to, um, you, you, you have to know in that every journal they always hire the editor or the reader to collect your gamma order. So um, in the end, even you um not sure in your writings, they will always have the reader or editor to fix it. So please write down in, in uh, make you feel comfortable to write down and then don't to worry much because if you worry every mistake that you you make is if we you really cannot we cannot create your works because you're too much worry. So try to relax and then make yourself comfortable to write. Okay, but they have the um, and common rule that you have to um, that have you have to keep in your mind that they have a lot of common gamma grammatical order that is I will not mention a lot here. But um, uh, maybe maybe I will tell the the constructor that maybe stop to work a little bit. Maybe give me two minutes, okay? 
Actually, the sound is not too uh, disrupting. Okay, I'm so sorry, okay, because of the um, another neighbor, they built some kind of like a roof. And then actually, I already tell them that I have the trainings at one until two. And then I asked them to not work in that hour, but maybe they forgot it. So and then they go to a little bit remind him. Oh, so I'm so sorry, okay. And then the, what else? Ah, oh, and the... Uh, the 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 common uh, uh, gamma here earlier that uh, I would not mention in here, but how to use the English gamma and basically that you have to know to make to not make the common error, like um like the example that I show you here is like a singular and plural forms, uh, because of the Indonesian language, including in Thai language also we have the problem that we are not have the singular or plural form, so when you write you write the paper, so maybe sometimes you forgot to pass S or ES, or sometimes you pass S or ES without no needs like that. So please, please um, be away with, with your grammatical errors. And the second one is about the tense. Uh, mostly when you try to describe your experimental or you try to describe your result, normally we use the, the past tense. And then I will show the example in the next slide and you will be more clear. Okay, Mr. Nguyen. And here, uh, as shown here, that's most of the mistakes, grammatical error that we make when we write the article that you are seeing here, a good way is to separate what you have done from what other have reports. Is it a mixed tense together? What you have done, we use the past tense to describe what you have done. Like here, the protein was not functional. Is it the result of your own? So we use the past tense. And then we use the present tense to discuss what our authors discussed before or what uh, they already done before. So we use the, this result. This result is consistent with all the results and indicate what? So some, some, some of techniques like this, as is, is like um, it have to it have to practice and have to uh, accumulate your experience. And this one is some of the uh, example of gamma grammatical error that normally the people make about the tense, about the singular and and plural forms. And um, but for the something that should be more important, not only the grammatical order, about the instruction to the author. In the next slide. Uh, that before before you will writing the article, you have to select the journal that you plan to publish. And normally we we, we call house style. Uh, each journal they will have their own house style that you have to be carefully to follow. Like for example, like a 
BMJ, right? Mostly they will written by use the first person, like I demonstrated that. But some of the science journals tend to use the third persons. We not use I, right? They use like the, this data demonstrates that. So you have to see the uh, you have uh, before you write you write right you have to select your journal and you have to read the style or how style of your journals that what is the style that they write and then the next slide I will show I capture the BMJ house style next slide um, BMJ house style in here you will see that this is the style of BMJ and then they will be clearly write down here that, uh, for example, we intend that you should use comma or no comma, which one that you have to use and or all, or which one that you, you have to use bots or whatever, or use third persons. So before you beginning to write the paper, better you already have your journal that in your mind, that which journal that you plan to publish. And then you see how they, how style that they have, uh, what is the style that they use, and before you writing, so you will not waste the time after, after that, to to fix is follow what they want, okay. And another thing that you have to uh, consider is, um, is is the word limit in your article. Like I told you that you have to read the instruction, right? And then they will have the limits of your article, right? how many words that, that you need to uh, consider. Like uh, normally in not many journals now have allowed 3,500 word limit. And, and now they, right, most of, most of the journal we submit past the online, online submission. So it, it will be easy for the editor to do account words. So to, to make sure that the journal that you select is how many words word that you need it. Okay. Okay. Change, change it. And the and and after you select the journal, right? And how do you know that when you can write the paper? You already select the journal. You now you already know know the rule, right? The rule that you have to keep in your mind. We have to you do right first you have to keep it every sentence is important second you have to use the word that easy to understand don't use the ambiguity word first you have to write down as if that someone who read it not a native speaker and then you know that you have to be careful about the grammatical order you have to be careful about the plural single forms and you have to be careful the tense and also the structure of the paper, how many words and how many word limiters and how many style that the paper needed. And now, how do you know that when you can write the paper? The first things, the first thing that is to check that you already have the sufficient data or not. Uh, to support your conclusion, you have to check it, how many data that you want to put in your paper and what is the conclusion that you plan to support your data. The best thing to do is to look the journal in your subjects that's uh, familiar or uh, similar in your topics. And then you can nowadays, it's easy, right? You can download pass online and then you look at it and you see how they support their results, how they write down the hypothesis, how they use the conclusion to support the hypothesis. After you read it, two or three paper, four or five paper, you will get the idea of the scale or the output that you need for your resource section. And, and here is the picture that I want to show you. Uh, I call here, is it the butterfly hunter? So I, I want you to thinking that every time when you write out the paper, okay, because I also thinking like that too. Um, we are not the butterfly hunter. You know butterfly hunter, right? They will carry the jar. One hand, they will carry the jar. And when they saw the beautiful butterfly, which one beautiful? So they catch it and then they put in the jar. 
And then after that, they walk a little bit and then they saw that beautiful and then they catch again and then they put in the jar until the jar is full. But we will not become like this. We will not be the butterfly hunter. We have to select the each result that we want to interpret for the reader. The important result to, in, to, to in, interpret for the reader. And also to select everything clearly that which one that you want to push in the paper, not like that you try to catch that thing. Oh, that one is good. You put in your paper, that one is good. So you have to be, have the hypo, have the specific hypothesis, specific result or interpret the conclusion that you need it. Okay. And the next step is this is like, um, like a, I, I just draw it. Maybe you have the idea after you see it. To see it. When you have, then you decide that you have enough data and how you are going to address your question. As it may be and the idea to set up the resource section, like, like you're getting out in the outline above, like a table one, what do you report? What is the conclusion that you plan to write down below? And what is the discussion that you plan to expand the conclusion at one? And after you get the outline like this, it will become obviously that, oh, maybe you see any gap. This table one is not linked with this conclusion. This conclusion is not linked with this discussion. After you, 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 you draw it in, in your paper or in, in some parts, you will see that, oh, you already prepare all of information that you need in this paper or not. In, in my way, in my tricks, when I write down the article, I will cut the paper and then I will be snapped. I will be put in the board one by one. Or oh, this one, the introduction, I want to put like this, like this. And then I make some kind of like a jigsaw until I feel that oh, my jigsaw already complete. And then I begin to write because I already have all of information in my hand. So I can write now. Okay, and the uh, next slide, and then um, and after we already prepare all of the, the the paper directly, already carefully to 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 see the paper. Now we choose the journals, but but um, because the second presenter we will uh, talking about how to select the journal, right? So this one I will not, I will not. Uh, Going a lot, but I just want to 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 remind that every every journal are not equal. Uh, you can see that they have the impact factor, right? And the impact factor, it will be showing that how often that the average article in that journal are cited. So it means the framework, and then the more famous, the more hardest, right? So you you have to realistic that the article that you write down is it good enough? or it is just only medium, medium skill level or is it low skill level? So you have to see your paper and realistic that it fit to this journal, which have this impact factor or not. So have to be realistic when you choose your journals. Okay. And the, the next slide is about the, um, the structure in the paper that normally in, in the paper, most of the journal will be follow this structure, but it depends. It's not a way, okay? But it depends on, on their own style of the journal. But it will be beginning with the title, with the um, with the learning title, and 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 the something that important in the abstract that you write down, it should be the quite fast things that people will read first. So the abstract will be attractive. You have to make the abstract that need to be clear, and use the use the attractive, important keywords inside the abstract because it's something that little you read, right? And um, the, the 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 first step is um the first step of to writing the paper is is about the personal preference, but for, like, like, like I write down in here, right? That 100 miles of journey, the hardest 
things is the first step. Make if you make the first step easy, you will feel that oh, this journey is is smooth, is is um is easy way. So I will beginning with the first step for you. Most most of the writings when you write a paper, right, you will be what's it called? You will be um in order, right? You write the introduction. And after that, you write the literature reviews, and then you write out the methodology, results, discussion, conclusion, right? But I would suggest you that you make the first step easy. Better you beginning with the methodology because of what? Because the methodology, for example, like how you select the data, um, how you um, test your um, instruction instruments, uh, statistical analysis, or uh, uh, ethical committee and proofers, whatever. This kind of the methodology is something that already, um, what's it called? Um, uh, already realistic. So you don't need to apply or change or try to make make it more complicated. So you just follow the realistic that, that you do it. So beginning with the methodology, it will be easy way to write and then simply to just to describe for your paper. And the next step, the next step, mostly I usually, the next step, mostly I usually like the results next. After the methodology, I going on to write the results. I interface the, the, the data, um, which one is significant or not, um, how many percent, and how many um, which factor the significance, and after that, after the result, I beginning with the um, discussions, and interface the the result that I just just going through. So beginning with the methodology, after that, with the results and the discussions, and the the next one that. So after that, after I become, after I finish this discussion, I'm directly going home, home straight. So I will be beginning to write the introductions. And I want you to keep in your mind that something that you like, you don't, you don't need to say that what you have found. Most of the, most of the writer or most of the article that I have, I have read it. Uh, they make the mistake like that. They always write what they found in their study, put in the introduction. Is it no, is it not not correct? You have to write down what you plan to find, not about what you have found. You understand my key point, right? So um, you write down about the problem. You write down the, how you deal with it. And what is the current literature reviews? What is the related study that have have studied in your topic before, but not going to talking about the the, the finding and what you have found? Because this one already including in the abstract or in the discussion sections. And. And the, the figures, figure that you put in, figure or table that you put in your, uh, that you put in your article, you should be use the title that really clear. And also, uh, I'm I meaning that when you see the figure, right, should be use the figure that really clear, clear to interpret. You see the figure or the table, you understand what is the finding or what is the resource of this table. By no need to go to find the writing text to explain this, this table, no need it. You see the table or oh, you understand oh, this table, what is mean? What is the result of this table? You don't need to find the, find the writing in the result section to read it, what is meaning. So no needs. So the title, also the title of the figure should be clear and, and modest and be able that it will be um, 
the the app stack that should be clear and then also have to be like um, support the results with with uh, clearing conclusions. Okay, and the and then I have a little bit more about the the oh this one this one ah and the reference that you plan that you plan to use like you. Mostly, I recommend to use the, the, the endorse programs and or maybe the similar program that familiar with the similar with the endorse and and the endorse is it like um will will be uh, generate the reference in the collect format that uh, specific journal and to cite that is is very important because of uh, they have some something that I have to remind that. First, away reference or cited the high impact factor journals, and try to what's it called avoid avoid okay to try to don't cite it yourself. Um, why 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 I put in the second rule here because of in Thailand I I'm I'm not sure that in Indonesia is the same. Is it have the same criteria or not? But in Thailand they have. They have the third. I, I mean, that in Thailand, when you ask to be the assistant professor or associate professor or, or professor, uh, they will be also see the citation of your paper in the score system also. So, because of that, because of that one, is it one criteria to 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 judge that which one can be the professor or not? So the problem now is most of Researcher try to cite to cite it yourself a lot, no, because they want to increase the high index of their own score part. So they cite it yourself, cite it ourselves a lot, myself a lot, and then to make the high index of the score is is increasing. And but I suggestion that when you when you um when you write write out the paper, you should be avoid. Don't try to cite it yourself too much. Maybe just one or two is enough. And and the third the third one the third one actually I'm not quite agree much. But from the theoretical, they say that better you write down, finish, write down whole of the article first, and after that you try to find the link to put it uh, because because. Because they suggestion that if you stop and then you buy the friend to support, right, your idea will be gone. When you write down, you have to be smooth, right? And then you you uh, feel happy, and then you and then you write down long. But if you have to stop, uh, five minute, and then you find the reference, uh, it will be like a stuck. So it depends their own style. But but for me, but for me, for me, I prefer. I prefer to write down and find the reference directly because I forget it. I will forget that where I bring it. So I, it depend depend on your own your own style. Okay, you can stop or don't stop. It's up to you. Okay. And the problem, the naughty problem that that uh norm, normally I I don't know that is, is there any this problem in in Indonesia condition or not. Um. For for example, like a um, like a who will be the first author or the second author? Because I I don't know that in your system is it important or not to be the first author or the second author. But in my in my country, when you want to ask the professor, you have to be the first name. Yes, you have to be the first name, first name, and also correspondence because. Um, if you be the third name, second name, you 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 cannot use that article resource to ask the professor. So sometimes in Thai we have the dispute about it, who will become the first, who will become the second, some kind like that. And then some policy of the publication that that you have to consider, like all of the of of the researcher that who wrote down the paper have to be agree agree to send. Because if one of them don't agree, so it be problem. Okay, and um, 
after that, you submissions. After you submission, right? They will have three, three reply that, two, two reply that, that you will get first rejection, right? Uh, I got reject a lot. The first paper that I'm sent it ten times, I got rejected ten times. I I don't know the tricks, and then I just wrote the first paper. I wrote about twenty five pages. Yes, pages send it and check, and then I don't I don't know myself. I send another place. I didn't send another place. And after I think eight or nine place, I just feel con I just feel confusing that why they reject me. And after that, I beginning to find the trick. And then I until now. I still got I still got the rejections some sometimes, but most most of most of my articles still um revision the, the second one. The revision is like um yes, if you get this one okay, really lucky, you still get a chance to um fix your paper and then get a chance to publication. And the third one is immediately acceptance. Oh, you are you are Supi. You are the um, Wonder Woman. You are the um, Iron Man. You are the best. It means that you are good. Okay. And after, okay, ne ne next slide. After you get the submissions, after you already get the acceptance, right? They will send you about the proof list. Uh, you have to check. Is it only the last time when you public right? So you check that um, which one there are not uh, necessary, which one there are not order. So you check before you will confirm to to them that you want to public. Okay. Uh, the 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 next the next one I believe that is it about the example. Hmm. Or oh, this one is just as pass is okay. Mr. No, no part. This one is it all slide. It's part is okay. Ah, okay. Can can I try to share my my PowerPoint because I add more the 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 example. I will try to share my. Come up, come up or not? No. I think it's come still up. half page <laughs> on the screen. Like mm. I have to use my PowerPoint because I add some uh, what's it called the 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 example that from your your colleague that what's it called sent to me and then I put in here. You cannot this one no, no. Still no how? You have. Are you and, sharing the and, screen or are you sharing the PowerPoint? It's PowerPoint, I think. PowerPoint. Uh, would you please mm, try to oh, share the it? screen? Share the screen. Maybe we can try it. Try the screen. Mm. Here? No, still not. Still Cannot? half. Yeah, still oh, half. So. Or maybe mm. you can uh, resize the, okay. the PowerPoint. Can you resize, resize the PowerPoint? The PowerPoint. Uh, yes. Yeah. To Better? The, no, I mean smaller. Smaller. To the left smaller, side of your smaller. screen. To the left side of your screen. Yeah? Yes. Better, much better. Can? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Oh my God, in his very little. <laughs> oh. You can see it? But it's very clear, yes. Oh, Kia, Kia, Kia in there. Oh my God, okay, okay. You are the, you are the super Indo people. Okay. Um, let me, you see it here, right? Okay, in here, uh, is it, is I, um, I show you the, bad writing and the good writing that you should make. Is it the example that I bring it? And then I found it a lot. You can see in here, in the left side, is it the bad writing? And then I want you to 
analyze it with me that what is the problem with this sentence? Okay, the first, the first sentence here, the gray wolf is a timid creature that is being hunted and exterminated. If you see here, you, what do you think that what is the problem of this sentence? I already have the result. I already have the answer here, but you have to try to guess. What is the problem with this sentence? Have to, I have to, cannot call the name like a student. Eh? <laughs> if in my class, I shall we the open name. the microphone to all the respondents or shall we uh, let them raise their hands? Uh, it's, it's, it's okay. Less the hand is okay. Less the hand better, less the hand. And how can I solve it? Uh, from the participants. So other no, participants, no. you can raise your hand if you okay. want to answer Ajahn Isara's question. The, okay, I repeat the question again, okay? Because uh, my friend, uh, I mean that, uh, because of Dr. Fari said that, uh, want me to find the, um, some example that uh, bad writing and how we can identify and then how we can fit it. So I, I give you the example of sums of the bad writing that I um, away base it. And, but you will cannot be the good writing if you cannot identify how it's wrong inside, right? So yes. my question is, um, when you see this sentence, the sentence that I highlight, what is the problem in there? The answer is here, okay, but you have to, 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 is you, is you someone listen to me, right? Mr. Nobia. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are too shy to answer or to raise their hands. <laughs> Oh, uh, you listen to me, right? oh, I have to speak Bahasa. I cannot speak Bahasa. <laughs> okay, no one answer. I cannot call the name too because it's not my student. Cannot call the name. No one Surely answer. not it's okay. all of them are students, but um, some of them also lecturers from public health faculty. Oh, oh I see. Uh, so should I, I call them? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> So, so, so I will give the answer directly. I will be the teacher and student also. <laughs> yeah. okay. So, <laughs> the, the problem of this sentence, actually this sentence is um, understandable. You read this sentence, you understand, right? What is the meaning of this sentence? And also it's not have any gamma order. It's collecting. I mean, it's collect, it's perfect. But the problem of this sentence that you see is, is the sentence is not show cause and effects. I saw many people when they write down the article, is it the problem that they have makes mistake. They write down the sentence and then we call this sentence in the technical term that is stand alone sentence. We call stand alone. You know stand alone, right? Stand is stand up. Alone is alone. Stand alone. Is it is because stand alone is like an empty, empty sentence. This sentence is not have cause and effect. We don't know that why you stand in here, don't have any reason, no indicate the importance of existence. What are we going to write this sentence for explain some things or for justify something? We don't know. So I change this sentence to become the right side here, even though the gay wolf is a gentle animal. The okay, wolf, wolf is gentle animals, but it's still beating heart, right? It's still BQ. Because of the humans wrongfully thinks that it's the killer. So you see cause and effect. You have the meaning and have the reason. So this one is perfect writing. So the first rule that you have to remind that don't write down the standalone sentence. Don't write down the sentence without cause and effects. You have to, maybe you have to come to try to check it. The second example that I want you to see is drinking too much alcohol is bad for your health. 
Okay. Who can answer me what's wrong with this sentence? Just one, okay? Just one. Yes, Just one please person? to all participants who <laughs> wants to answer. <laughs> you I can want, also answer in Bahasa Indonesia. I will I translate it for you. I want to communicate with someone. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I, I will call one name here. <laughs> At least one. Oh, here we have uh, one message from Marceli Widia. Marceli Widia, maybe you can speak directly. Marcel. You you can speak Bahasa and then let let Novia Novia answer Novia translate to me. I already hmm? asked her to unmute Mar her or him, <laughs> Marceli Widia. Yes, please speak. Okay, I, I will repeat. Mm. Yes, good afternoon. Can I answer in Bahasa? Which one? I don't hear him. Can I answer in Bahasa? Oh, yeah, yeah. Masih Nanti wilayah. saya translate. Masih oh, yes. wilayah. Uh, kenapa yang di bad writing itu? Uh, karena menurut saya uh, kalimatnya itu menggiring kepada... Uh, Opini yang kemungkinan salah gitu. Ketika dijabarkan lebih lanjut di good writing, eh, di situ dijelaskan eh, seberapa besar eh, alkohol itu mengganggu kesehatan dan mengapa alkohol itu mengganggu kesehatan. Dijelaskan alasan-alasannya seperti itu. Oke, okay, so she said that um, from the bad writing, uh, it could lead to uh, what uh, wrong decision like uh, misinterpretation and uh, on the good writing uh, the excessive alcohol blah 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 it explains that um, not jumping into a conclusion that uh, could lead, lead us into the wrong conclusion uh, yes one and um, one one of the reason is that one and one of the reason is that one, but um, the something that important that I want you to see here is drinking and excessive alcohol consumption. First, when you write things, you have to write things with the, oh, th thank you for your answer, okay? Oh, I feel really lovely to listen another one to speak with me. What is your name? Masuli. We, Marcel, we, 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 Oh, thank you very much. Terima kasih. I feel very appreciated your answer. Oh, to very encouraged. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, 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 the answer of Marcel, we, 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 is, is correct and it's good. And, uh, and the, the one that I want to point more is first, don't try to use the informal vocabulary. You see that you use dinkling. Drinking is something like a speaking, speaking word. You have to use here, consumptions. So try to use the formal vocabulary when you write things. And another one is very important, okay? I want you to chot, chotting down, writing down in your chot note in your paper. You're seeing here, drinking too much alcohol is bad for your health. When you read, when you read this sentence, what? What are you feeling? Yes, um, drinking alcohol, yes, bad for your health. And then what? I mean that something that you want to underline. This one is something that underline, underlining, right? It's important. We have to emphasize, right? This one, bad for your health. Emphasize, important, underlining. But when you write here, yes, thinking too much. Yes, bad for your health. When I read here, oh, okay, bad for your health. And then what? I don't feel any interesting. I don't feel oh, I have to afraid to drinking alcohol. So if something that very really important that you want to underline, please add more. What is the bad for your health? Bad like what? Bad for economy? Bad for because of I have to pay the money? Bad what? So. Here, I change to be the, the excessive alcohol consumption affects your health and may contribute to liver disease, heart disease, and weight gain. So after I read here, oh, if I drinking alcohol too much, 
oh, I will gain my weight, I will be fat, or oh, I will be got heart attack, or oh, something, a problem with the liver disease. So I feel afraid, afraid to drinking alcohol. Sometimes when you write the article, you have to make it look like when you read, when you see the movie, you have to make a drama inside it. Oh, yes, drinking alcohol is bad for your health. And then stop. Don't have any impressions. I don't have any interesting, any things. Okay. So the trick in the first slide, first, cause and effects. You cannot write down, we call standing alone. Standing and alone, stand alone. Stand alone sentence. Don't use stand alone sentence. Try every, every sentence that you created need cause and effect. Don't use the standing alone sentence. And don't use what? Don't use the informal vocabulary like thinking, like bad uh, in your paper or ugly. We call ugly what? You have to use uh, disadvantage, uh, consumption like this. The second, the second lighting that I want to, second paragraph that I want to show you here, using the internet have a positive effects on people. Okay, did anyone tell me what is problem in this internet? Any participants who wants to answer? Or should, bahasa I, should I call? Bahasa, yes. bahasa. Bahasa, bahasa Indonesia bahasa. boleh disilahkan, dipersilahkan. Ba Silahkan raise hand. Ada, ada bahasa, ada bahasa. Silahkan atau saya pilih salah satu partisipan ya. <laughs> no. Lo, lo, Ajan lo Farid. Sian, lo sian. Pak Farid, lo sian. silahkan. <laughs> no. Oke, okay, silakan yang I mau menjawab. Oke. Okay. No? It's okay. The 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 problem of this sentence is here. Using the internet have the positive effect. What is the positive effect? Like right what I told you that what I mentioned before that when you writing the article right or you write the sentence, you have to ask as that Someone who read it is not native English speaker. So if I'm not the academic lecturer or I'm not the lecturer or I'm not academics and I read here, I will be confusing that. What is the positive effect? So when every time when you use the uh, technical term or you use the, uh, the word to describe something that don't have meaningful, you have to give more irrelevant, more the example. So I seem to be the internet improve life by what? By create new friendship. Is it a positive effect? Like I cut positive effect out by creating the new friendship, by exchange the idea. This one is it a positive effect. If I write down only here, internet have the positive effect on people. Is it, we don't know what is the positive effects. Okay, the next one, the next example. This paper will look at the advantage of school uniform. Ah, the same problem with the previous one. Positive effects. We don't know what is it, right? And what is the advantage of school uniform? Just shut down all of this. So in here, so I change to be school uniforms impact student by what? The positive effects. Um, lowering costs, right? reduce the violence in the campus and what's it called create the experience about the uniform school right so every time when you try to use the um, sophisticated word or you use the technical term word you have to expand or you elaborate more or you give the example more what is the meaning of your part and here And another example here, encourage students to read can help them build analytical skill. Ah, the same. What is the problem? 
Yes, if I'm not um, a, a, te a teacher's expertise, or I'm not uh, expertise about the skill program, after I read in here, I will not know what is the analytical skill, right? So you have to elevate more. When the children are encouraged to read, it can build what? Build a good habit, increase the vocabularies, expand the knowledge. See, this one is analytical skill, so they know. And the next, the next example, saving the wealth should be the top priority. Ah, this one I already mentioned before. What is the problem with this sentence? This sentence does not show cause and effects. Why we have to save the whales, right? What, what is the reason? This sentence is stand alone sentence. Told up with nothing. So I change to be saving the whales will affect to the Earth's diversity. Because of what? Because can maintain the planet's health and ecosystem. So I have cross saving the wealth effect to save the world. And the the last example that I want to show you is here. Um, in this paper, I will explore popular uh, popular childhood fairy tale. I will explore fairy tales. You know fairy tales, right? Fairy tale is it? Uh, what's it called? The the, the child. Chai book, right? Yeah. This one, the problem, the same, though cause and effects. Why we have to explore the fairy tales? Ah, we don't know, right? Is this one is it the same? Standing alone sentence. So you have to make a cause and effects. Or oh, fairy tales is a good bedtime story for what? To to maintain the mental health of the children, right? This is it um, some example paragraph that I cut, cut, and then I saw some mistake that most of the people um, um, make it. But it's standing alone sentence. No cause and effect sentence. No explanation that why this sentence come up. No justify anything. And some is you use the informal vocabulary, uh, which, which is not appropriate with the paper. And something that you should be underlined, underlining or should be you to emphasize. But you write down, it looks like the little cat. It should be you make like a tiger, right? but you write down, it feels like a little cat. Actually, you should be underlined, but you don't make them look interest at all. And some technical term, some technical words, some complicated words. If you want to use, please try to elaborate more. What is it? To make another person that don't um, don't is in your frills understand. Okay, and here you you see right? No, we are, you you still see here right? Um, this one um, I it think is it's um, too small. Too small. Uh, like this, like this. Yes, better. Better. Right? Okay. Yes. Thank this you. one is it um is it um. This is the article resource of my friends, and then he sent to me, and then I mean that we are writing together, and then he sent to me, and then I read it. I, I want you to so I want you to see some some mistake that I put the square here. The first thing here here he used the repeated word immunization and vaccination. So I cut left only once, and I saw in many paper that I don't know why. Uh, like right, like in square here. You you count on me, okay? One, two, three, four, five, five sentence, five sentence here. Um, it is talking about the the EPI programs when it began in nineteen seventy four, right? And the WHO or large this launched this program in 1974, and this program is helps people to quite find it and blah, 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 blah. Like I told you, the tricks, when you write the paper, you have to select every, every sentence important. So, so we, I think we don't need to know that where the 
EPI came up since 1974. You can put this whole sentence in the literature reviews, or you can write down in the chapter one, chapter one in your full report. Um, it's okay. But when you write in the late and you write in the article research, right? You have to try to make it short, but every sentence that you put is clear and important. We, we call the star, star sentence. So I cut here, after four here, I cut to be here. The WHO's have the policy on EPIs, which prevents population from sick disease. And then I said that this is what kind of the disease. No need to say that, oh, it's safe how many people and when it's occur, it's, I, I think it's not, uh, no need to put in the articles. And, and also is here another um, example here. The first um, blue line is from my friend also. You, you will see here, I also saw this kind of problem in the paper that sent to me in the morning. Um, you see here, many studies have reviewed the difference in immunization between city and village. You understand the meaning, right? Okay. We have problem between city and minute and village about vaccine to the children. Uh, city is higher than the or, or whatever. And then the second sentence, he said again. He said again, immunization not equal between city and village. Unbalanced. For what? Is it repeating meaning again? The first sentence is one, the second sentence. Is it the same meaning? Meaning what? We have disparity between city and village, between rural and urban, between between people that live in um, outside the town or in town. Is it the same meaning? So we don't need to elaborate long like this. Then I told you that every sentence need meaningful to leave it. So I cut it left only. There is a number of study that report disparity in resident area whatever, comparing between urban or rural, or comparing between city or village or whatever, resident area. Yeah. Which is in the developed country, done, only that. So you can see that one, two, three, four. In four sentence of hymns, I cut left, maybe only one and a half, cut left only here. So every time when you write down the paper, you come to read it again, and then you see that mm, you need this sentence or not. This sentence is need or not. If you cut this sentence, the meaning that you want still here or not. If can, can cut, you cut it. Like what I, I did is below. Another one here. Can you see? Okay. Another one here is another paper of my friends doing about the menopause. I took the first paragraph of him and then I read it. Have about eight line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eggs. I think that it's cut left only two. Because of what? You 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 try to see here. He talking about the definition of menopause, right? Uh, yeah, is it about the permanent situation and have to be um, substitute for 12 months, I understand. And it will cause problem with psychological issue condition, right? I understand. And below, he talking again, it will be impact to physical and psychological condition. He talk again, here is the psychological abnormal and here psychological condition again, meaning. And below, he talking again that uh, people will be transformed from reproductive for non-reproductive period. This sentence, is it the meaning of up here? That is it a permanent sensation again. So is it no needed? So I cut, I mean that is it a repeated meaning by using uh, the different style of sentence 
with no need, you can write down like this in your full report. But for the paper, I think it's, it's not necessary to, to add until like this. Every sentence is have to count it because we have the count limit. Some of paper, 3,000 only that. So every sentence is meaningful. So I change to be menopause is defined as the permanent sensations of menstruation over 12 consecutive months. And a result to psychological disorder. This one is already cover the meaning up here. And here again, here again, you will see here, he's talking about the, um, uh, the pre-menopause uh, involved in three states. This one no need it. Because of what? Because we, we are not right, uh, we are not right out the history of all the theoretical of the pre-menopause put in the paper, right? We just want to briefly one day to know what is the pre-menopause, what is the effect, what is the cause. So you see here, this one, first day, second day, to be deleted. And in here, it said that, oh, the woman may experience syndromes such as, oh, and then he described many symptoms, like a uh, hot flash, nice sweats, insomnia, many, many, many. It should not more than three when you write out such as, okay, nightmare, insomnia, and disorder, and more done. But this one will have four, have five, have six. And in the end, they're talking that all oh, then the, the symptom it will be it will be negative impact to quality of life. Again, again with the period previous section. So every time the key point that I want to show you is every time when you write down the paper, you have to try to creating that. Every sentence that you put down in your paper is important or is it necessary or not to showing then but if not please cut it or you can reduce the, reduce this sentence without the meanings change so you delete it that is what i suggest in okay um do i finish my pre present and novia and do you have any questions or? Yes. Actually, I have some paper, paper of the friends of yours that sent to me since morning. Or, or I, I will give back the time to you, okay? That you want to let them ask first or or you want me to continue to, to, okay. to comment the paper? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, yeah. to all participants who maybe have some questions to Ajahn Isala, uh, you are pleased to raise your hands or write your questions on the chat room. If you raise your hand, I will ask you to unmute your microphone. Is there any questions from the participants? Okay, Ajahn, maybe uh, while waiting for uh, the questions from the participants, I have one yeah. question. Um, I heard that if we cite um, one article from the journal that we were about to publish, uh, they mm -hmm. will, uh, I mean, the editor will, would be likely to publish our article, article more because uh, we cite uh, their articles. Is that true or not? You mean cite the article? What do you mean it? Yes, like citing the articles that already on the journal, that published on that journal. Mm. For, for, for my experience, I, I don't think it's true. No, I don't, I, don't, oh. I don't think it's like that. I don't think that the most important is about, about the quality of your journals, of your article. Mm -hmm. This is the most yes. important. Even you try to cite it, they reflect a lot, and, but you have your low quality is not... I think it's not impacts. I have, I have to explain to submit in one one journals, and 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 the writing is is quite good. And in the end, they ask me to cite it. They they journal two or three. In the end, in the end. Oh, please, can you please oh. cite it? <laughs> cite it. They 
the journal, uh, the article in the journal, two or three uh -huh. in your paper, uh, to, to ask, to request, ask me to add. So I think that maybe I, I keep 20% for, for, for that factor. I see. 80% okay. is the own quality, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any questions from our participants? If there are no questions, maybe uh, we can ask Ajahn Isara to um, discuss the existing uh, article. Okay. Um, is you can see now here, right? Yes. Uh, this one, this one I got in mornings and then I look at only the introduction part, okay? Because because they 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 wrote down until the methodology. I mean I mean that the own paper wrote down until the methodology. I don't know who is belong. Okay? And, um, and then I look at in the introduction part. I found some confusing here. The first sentence: um, the prevalence of the M sulfur is two point one. I'm not, not not quite sure, but but just just give the comment here that what is two point one here, because I'm not an expert in in your fields. Uh, maybe I read here I, a little bit confused. That what is the meaning of is two point one, and then have the um, bankers here one. Is it the first? Is it the first things? And after that, I read here is it uh, go going along well, and and then here again. This drug have has side effects. That that I mentioned before that every time when you use the technical term, you have to give the example to elaborate more. What is the side effects of this drug? When I read it and then I said, what is the side effect? If I'm not the uh, medical, I'm not the doctor, I'm, I, what is the side effect? So I make confused. So you have to elaborate more. The same in here, the same in here, side effect again. And when I saw in here, off here, off here, on the other hand, consumption too much drug is bad for the body. What I told you, don't try to use the informal, informal vocabulary. Is this advantage for your body? It's okay. But no, this one, inform, informal vocabulary. They said that, okay, it's bad for your body, especially the organ, uh, such, and then especially for the organ, and then you said again, such as. So I just confusing. You want to give the example here, or you want to give the example here? And after that, they just said that, therefore, the need of the drugs with new technology is expand to surface arrested. The same. You say that uh, to expand the surface area, so have the maximum absorption of the drug cause they contain many chemical. Here again, what is the cause? Um, I for, for me, I give I give seven from ten score. Is it not? Is it still is still good for me? But just only add. 7.10 7 for, for, for me, I give 7.10. And you just add some, elaborate more to make the reader who are not uh, ex expertise in your fields understandable. And when I see the next, next paragraph here, the yellow one that I highlight here is no problem. I cannot find any problem in here. So I just want to say to you that this this kind of, I mean that this paragraph is perfect for me. I don't have anything to change. Um, just just I don't know when you write it, what do you have um, emotion, but it's it's good for me. But the things that problem is below here. After this perfection paragraph, in here, um, you. You, uh, you, you repeat too much in ability of nano. In here, you say that oh, nano uh, practical is increased. This one increased drug, increased um, uh, can uh, delivery African and 
include many things. And you said again, uh, it in, can increase the blood system, uh, and, uh, increase the risk of side effects and many things. And below you said again, increase the level of drug in the blood. I saw about the drug in the bus two or three times. So maybe this paragraph you have to rewrite again and make the only select only the the powerful factor that relate to the nano particle and put in it. No need to put all of it because when I it, it, it will be okay if in the reports, but but this sentence this paragraph better cut left about three or four line is it will be okay. Yes, and it is it's only that for, for, for this paper because after this it will be related to about the methodology that that, that I I will not touching there. I will talking only the writing style. And they, they have no way they have any more paper that will be uh, give to me or not or Okay, I need to ask to uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have any, any question? Do you have yeah. any other articles to be discussed today? Ajahn Farid? Actually, <clears throat> okay, thank you. Actually, I have one question about the, the possibility to be accepted in a journal, particularly about the sample. How many, how big a sample is appropriate for the international journal? Because some some article I read it, it is quite a lot. For example, 400 until 1,000. But now the article it is only 100, but it is accepted by the journal. Uh, what, do you have any suggestion about this one? Maybe you ask, uh, Dr. Farid. I think this this question is it. Better is on you because you are the expert in statistical, right? <laughs> well, maybe you have another yeah. opinion about this one. For 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 me, uh, for me, for the uh, when I read in the the uh, the article that published in the score part, mostly that I found that the case is variance. Some is little, some is high, some is more than one thousand, some is very few, one one hundred. I think it's not depend on the site, but depend on how the way we create the select, uh, selection method is, is the probability or not. If you sure that it's already probability and then the case is 100 or 200, it's really fused. So I think it's enough to accept. And one of my paper I published in Medical Journal of Indonesia, right? Uh, the case of them is only 300, 350. I copied it. Uh, it's in Scopat Q4, right? Uh, and but the way how I'm select the case is I I use the probability method. So every step that I select is have what's it called? Is 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 have a system. So I don't think that it depends on the size of the of the population. This is from my view of points. Okay, thank you. So it means we have to make it clear how to explain in the method how we select the yes, sample. Yes, yes, how yes. We, how we do how we do with the sample. Okay, yes, thank yes, you. yes. And also I just I just got accept acceptance later from Spain in in Q2 in the Journal of Human and Sports Science. I use only 30 cases. Yes, 30 cases. But but that thirty cases is it already all population that I have it, so I, I still got the accepted later. So I, I don't think it's depend that you have to collect until one thousand, two thousand. It depends on how you design the methodology. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. It is very interesting because um, on my own um, 
experience, I was once uh, got rejected by uh, Q3 uh, due mm. to the small population, but uh, I used like 150 samples, but they already st stated that uh, I need more samples for that. Maybe, uh, do you think I need to mm. explain uh, about the methodology Maybe, of sampling? Mm, yes, yes, yes. Maybe you have to, to, to explain more about how you select the sampling, but make in the symmetric way. Yes. Because uh, two or three papers that I published, Q2, the, the, the updated, only 30 cases. And in the medical journal, 300 cases, only that. From the pregnancy woman, almost 10,000 in Thailand, I use the symmetric selects from the, from the system in the hospital, and then I randomly get only 300, and then I still, I still got the acceptance data from, from them. Yeah, so I'm, for me, I, I don't believe that. And then also, um, I used to read before in the theoretical that when you try to collect the high, or high sample and then you put in the statistical, it will be tend to make your results significant. So some of the, some of the, the theoretical, they will not recommend you select too much population, that not, not necessarily. I see, okay. Thank you very much. And also thank you very much for the inspiration <laughs> because uh, mm -hmm. you said it that you were uh, got rejected by so many at the beginning. Yes. yes, 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 uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I was rejected by... Uh, one year. For one year. For one year. Oh my God. <laughs> I, yes, the, the, the first time that I sent to puppies, like that I told before, right? I, I, I wrote down the story books and then I... I sell it in Thai. No, it's 200 pages, 300 pages like that per books. And then when I become to write out the article, I put everything inside. 25, 30 pages, and then I send it. I think more than 10 times that I rejected. Yes. And then after that, I, I know that, oh, you don't no, no need to put every sentence inside. Put the best one, only one. Put it. Right. Make it short. Every sentence is important. Is it the key? For writing the paper. Yes. What's yeah, great is that yeah, you yeah. didn't give up and um, you found the strategies. Yes. And 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 also um, the thing that I found it the research that you have made it should be create 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 what's it called? You have to carefully create at the beginning because to writing the paper. Is it the final, right? It means you have to finish your research and then you're writing the paper. So the post whole, create the questionnaire, trace your instrument, how you collect the sampling, how you create the frameworks. So it should be perfect at the beginning. So you basically you have to have the basics, uh, backgrounds about the research enough until you create the perfect, perfect research and then you publish. But if you don't create at the beginning, so it will be because uh, last last week last week in in Thai also have the trainers about writing. Yes, it's the same with you. Last week I also one of the trainer, and and the problem that I saw it, they have the young juniors, uh, being the resource. Let me see, and then say to me that I want I want to public in score but four or five person. And when I saw it in their report, they are not going along with the research criteria at all. They, it's wrong all. So I just don't know how to suggest it. Because the score part, it means you have to, to, to keep the standard, right? You have to keep the, the standard of your research that is in the good, in the good method. Yes, I'm kind of that. Okay, uh, do we have any other questions from our participants, from our guests? If you have any questions, please raise your hands or uh, you can write on our chat room. We still have six minutes left before we move to our second speaker. Is there any questions from you? Okay, uh, Priska. 
No? Good. No? Yes, good afternoon. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, yes. I have a, well, actually, it's not a question, but do you have any suggestion to improve using more formal word rather than using spoken word in a journal, in writing journal? I mean, thank you. Uh, can you repeat again? The sound is not clear. Uh, do you have suggestion to improve or using more formal word rather than using a spoken word in writing journal? There, actually, they have a lot, a lot of what's it called the. Uh, you 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 know some kind of like a co collaboration word. The word that meet together, or the, uh, I, I actually they have some kind of the programs I will send to to Mr. Farid, and then you can, you can you can use it. I always use that program to, to, to check the word that I use that is appropriate or not, and it can change or can improve this word or not. Maybe I will send to you. Is it? I think that is. We cannot improve in, in one or two days, but, but maybe it's little by little like that. Maybe don't, don't try to um, uh, worry too much in, in, in the word that, oh, this word is uh, not good enough or not want to try to improve the words more. I think the most important is um, the, the, the concept of your research. And the word is something, uh, yes, it's, it, it's important, but it's another part like that. But I was in, I was in Dr. Faris about the program that I always use it. And then you, you, you can try it. And then you, if you have a question for this program, I, I, you can send text to me. Okay. Thank you. Okay, is there other questions from our participants here? Okay, um, is there anything else that you would like to share to us, Ajahn Isala? Um, I, I hope that one day maybe maybe you can come to visit here. Did, did anyone have been in Thailand? Yeah. Some, some of you have been to Thailand or not, uh, but I hope that, that one day you can come to visit here and then and we, and also we, we, because we has for for the opinion in Thailand for Indonesia, yeah, most most of us feel that it's very difficult to go there, okay? Because we um we 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 knowing about the body, like, and then if one day you can come here and then we can join the 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 research or research project together, and then can meet my colleague, and then we know that oh. In Indonesia is, is have a lot of something that interesting and I will be feel really um, really pleased to welcome all of you to come here. Yes, yes, only that. And and if you have uh, any things for me to help and in, for the uh, comments or to see your paper or you want to uh, do need someone to cooperate with your writing, uh, you can you can send the email to me. I will uh, love to write with all of you. Okay. Only thank that. you very much. And, and that. Okay. Thank you very much, Ajahn Isara. Um, wow. So I can conclude that uh, writing articles is like um, an arts, that uh, creating a storyline, making a drama, also. Don't forget to avoid the standalone uh, sentences because it's it will be uh, like a strange and also we could go, uh, we could jump into the wrong conclusion from the uh, standalone uh, sentences and also that uh, it needs a lot of experiences uh, like the experiences of being rejected and also the experiences of being published itself. Thank you very much for your sharing of uh, your experiences and also your knowledge in writing articles. Thank you very much once again. Ajan Isala, Siram Manirat, Kapkunaka. So now, um, oh, uh,
I would like to apologize for uh, all of our participants today that uh, Ajan uh, Isalasila Manerat will be uh, off after this session uh, because she has another agenda. So uh, now uh, we will um, move into the second session. So moving right along, we have another special guest. He is uh, the associate professor, uh, professor, sorry. <laughs> Associate Professor Dr. Nur Jazuli, SKM MKES. Um, waktu dan tempat kami persilahkan, Bapak. Open the unmute sebentar. Makasih. Saya tak share dulu ya. Baik. Sudah kelihatan? Uh, belum itu Pak. Belum. Ya. Yeah. Sudah. Belum Pak. <laughs> belum juga. Atau saya yang share Pak? Boleh. Oh, sebentar, 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 sebentar. Ini saya. Iya. Yeah. Kalian lihat? Nah, iya. Yeah. Nah. Hampir, hampir. Iya, yeah, sudah, Pak. Sudah full? Sama. Mas Eko itu bisa ditaruh di atas nggak, Mas? Apa ya? Mas Eko. Oh, Mas Eko. Itu apa? Gambar, picture. Apanya, Pak? Video, video. Video? Otomatis di samping itu ya, kalau di saya samping kanan ya. Nggak bisa ya. Baik, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ya. Eh, rekaman saya partisipan masih ada 53 atau berapa tadi ya. Jadi, eh, masih kelihatan ya Pak Nabi? Halo? Kelihatan Pak di saya Pak. Kelihatan ya, oke. Okay. Okay. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Partisipan masih bertahan di atas 50 dari 60 maksimal dari yang saya pantau. Dan sesi ini mungkin sesi yang tidak menarik mungkin karena ini adalah uh, substitusi atau pengganti dari Bu Praba yang seharusnya kemarin memberikan materi ini. <tuh> Tapi barangkali bagi pemula. Ya, tentu ada pengalaman yang mungkin nanti bisa dipetik, ya, termasuk saya sendiri. Baik, jadi eh, saya diberi tugas oleh Pak Farid. Ya, topiknya adalah strategi memilih eh, jurnal ya, internasional gitu, untuk publikasi internasional, jadi strategi sehingga saya coba eh, berpikir jadi. Saya beri judul Select a Suitable Journal for Publication. Uh, ini karena menutupi anu ya, menutupi apa namanya, Mas. Ini fotonya, videonya menutupi materi mana nih Mas ya? Bagian. Halo. Jadi saya hanya ingin sharing pengalaman aja jadi pengalaman di dalam memilih jurnal ini kan ya ada enaknya ada enggaknya jadi dulu ya beberapa tahun yang lalu udah 10 tahun yang lalu saya pernah publikasi bersama teman-teman di FKM itu dua tahun baru baru publish gitu itu pun dengan bimbingan intensif ya dari pakarnya kemudian ya Dua tiga tahun yang lalu, ya, saya juga punya pengalaman publikasi di jurnal internasional Scopus. Proses dua tahun, ya, bahkan menjelang hari raya itu disuruh melakukan revisi terakhir. Kemudian setelah hari raya, alhamdulillah ada berita ditolak. Gitu. Jadi kadang-kadang ya menyakitkan gitu. Sudah proses dua tahun, ya kan? Terakhir itu suruh memperbaiki jarak dua minggu ternyata ditolak. Itu di jurnal teknologi di UTM 
uh, Universitas Teknologi of Malaysia. Kebetulan di sana ada medicalnya gitu ya. Ada apa namanya? Skopnya ada medicalnya. Jadi uh, itu pengalaman yang uh, mungkin tidak uh, bisa terlupakan dari usaha yang saya lakukan secara sendirian untuk submissionnya gitu ya. Walaupun di dalam proses perbaikan itu juga tanya uh, para teman-teman yang sudah pengalaman gitu. Uh, saya punya pengalaman sebuah artikel yang harus saya transfer istilahnya kalau dari editorial mengatakan it is better your article be transfer to other journal. Jadi pernah ditolak alasannya sebaiknya uh, artikel Anda itu ditransfer ke jurnal yang lain yang lebih cocok tetapi memberikan solusi misalnya. Yaitu yang tadinya saya publish di Journal of Entomology selama dua bulan ya nunggu nunggu eh ternyata ditolak artinya apa berarti skopnya tidak cocok gitu belum di review dari skopnya aja sudah tidak cocok gitu sehingga ditolak tetapi diberikan uh, masukan untuk dipindah atau di submit ke jurnal yang lainnya yaitu di jurnal asian jurnal of pedemologi gitu dan alhamdulillah ya kira-kira prosesnya selama 10 bulan itu baru uh, final untuk di accepted melalui beberapa kali 4 sampai 5 kali revisi yaitu perbaikan gitu. Jadi sangat melelahkan sebenarnya, tetapi pengalaman itu pengalaman ini tidak uh, apa namanya terlupakan bagi saya. Nah. Oleh karena itu tadi sudah disampaikan oleh uh, Dr. Isra Isra gitu ya. Bagaimana menulis sebuah artikel yang baik? Ada catatan tadi di awal presentasinya bahwa bahasa Inggris bukan merupakan hal yang utama atau problem utama sekarang, karena ada beberapa fasilitas yang bisa kita gunakan. Apakah itu adalah klinik yang memfasilitasi transit dari Indonesia to English atau English to English atau providing itu sudah tidak masalah. Jadi bagi teman-teman mahasiswa atau teman-teman dosen, barangkali menurut saya eh, jangan terlalu dirisaukan kalau kita mau publikasi di jurnal internasional tetapi kita tidak bisa bahasa Inggris. Yang penting adalah artikelnya itu sudah dibuat dengan baik. Nah, saya memberikan catatan di dalam penulisan artikel ilmiah agar supaya tidak bisa diterima di jurnal internasional yang reputasi gitu ya dari pengalaman yang saya alami. Jadi memang kita harus berpikir gitu ya yang bagaimana supaya kita manuskrip kita atau artikel kita itu bisa diterima di jurnal internasional yang reputasi. Pengalaman saya termasuk ini masukkan dulu dari peer review gitu ya. Peer review yang pertama adalah pastikan bahwa artikel kita ini yang kita tulis itu mempunyai internasional kontak. Jadi punya kontak internasional. Jadi mungkin teman-teman mahasiswa terutama S1, S2, kalau S3 mungkin sudah levelnya sudah tinggi ya. Biasanya pasti itu internasional konteksnya itu ada gitu. tetapi bagi mahasiswa dua yang mungkin penelitiannya itu sifatnya lokal ya bahkan sampelnya pun sedikit kadang-kadang eh, tidak sama sekali sama sekali tidak menyinggung internasional konteksnya oleh karena ini oleh karena itu menjadi catatan saya di dalam pelatihan ini kalau teman-teman eh, mahasiswa maupun teman dosen kalau mau publish di Jurnal internasional, ya apalagi yang bereputasi, pastikan bahwa artikel yang Anda tulis itu mempunyai internasional konteks. Internasional konteks ini bisa dikaitkan dengan internasional policy atau mungkin internasional isu. Gitu. Satu contoh, misalnya saya pernah menulis jurnal artikel tentang filariasis, gitu ya, yang awalnya penelitiannya lokal, gitu, tetapi setelah kita pelajari, ternyata pengendalian filariasis itu punya ada kaitannya dengan kebijakan internasional yang digagas oleh WHO misalnya adalah program eliminasi limpatik filaresis itu 
eh, harus selesai misalnya tahun 2020 ya. kemudian sekarang diperpanjang lagi tahun 2030 misalnya nah, itu bisa kita mandos kita masukkan di latar belakang sebagai internasional kontak gitu nah, kemudian di sisi lain barangkali isu-isu internasional yang saat ini berkembang adalah covid 19 misalnya covid 19 gitu ya nah, itu bisa dimasukkan di latar belakang atau mungkin di dalam proses pembahasannya sehingga artikel yang kita tulis ini menurut saya punya rasa ya punya tes ya punya tes internasionalnya jadi pastikan bahwa kalau kita ingin publikasi di jurnal internasional ya apalagi yang reputasi bahwa artikel anda ini punya internasional kontak kemudian yang kedua itu adalah the types of methodological aspect jadi Memang ini uh, tergantung pada guidance-nya. Jadi memang beberapa jurnal itu mempunyai guidance sendiri-sendiri, ya petunjuk sendiri-sendiri di dalam aspek metodologi. Ini sangat variatif sekali. Gitu. Ya, jadi ada apalagi jurnal yang medical itu uh, lebih rigid, ya lebih detail begitu. Oleh karena itu, ya pasti anda harus membaca guidance of author. Ya, nah. Uh, syukur-syukur uh, Anda bisa langsung mencontoh barangkali ada manuskrip komplitnya. Kemudian yang ketiga itu adalah collaboration with other authors. Jadi ini uh, juga pernah kami lakukan ya dengan teman yang di luar Universitas Undip ya, Sponegoro itu. Sudah kami lakukan uh, saya lakukan dua kali ya, dua kali uh, kita menggandeng atau kita digandeng oleh Uh, autor dari luar uh, universitas kita sendiri. Ya tentu uh, kalau kita menggandeng orang di dalam apa namanya penulisan artikel ini harus dipastikan bahwa orang-orang ini memang juga bertanggung jawab ya terhadap uh, apa namanya hasil yang kita tulis ya. Kalau orang bilang minimal dibaca dan memberikan masukan walaupun tidak ikut penelitian misalnya begitu. Jangan sampai uh, apa namanya orang yang kita masukkan sebagai autor di dalam artikel kita ini ternyata sama sekali tidak punya peran. Tadi di uh, Dr. Isra sudah menyampaikan di sana bahwa every author ya have apa namanya full responsibility. Jadi mempunyai tanggung jawab penuh ya setiap. Jadi harus pastikan bahwa kalau kita menggandeng orang luar ya nah di dalam menulis artikel ini maka harus dipastikan mereka memberikan kontribusi apa di dalam penulisan ini. walaupun minimal membaca, melakukan providing, sehingga bisa memberikan masukan atau koreksi terhadap artikel yang kita tulis. Kemudian yang keempat, ya ini uh, adalah refer to high quality of journal article. Ya. Jadi di dalam proses pembahasan, ya memang masukkan sebanyak mungkin artikel-artikel yang relevan ya, dengan topik yang kita tulis, uh, seperti misalnya adalah artikel-artikel yang publish di jurnal yang terindeks Scopus misalnya apakah itu Q1, Q2, 3 dan 4 ya. Jadi ini mungkin catatan saya bagaimana kita bisa apa namanya menghasilkan sebuah manuskrip artikel yang harapannya itu punya probabilitas yang cukup tinggi untuk diterima di uh, jurnal internasional di samping tadi secara secara apa namanya substansi sudah dijelaskan panjang lebar oleh Dr. Isra dari Thailand atau pembicara sebelumnya tadi. Gitu. <tuh> ya. uh, oleh karena itu, bagaimana strateginya, Bapak Ibu, teman-teman sekalian, memulai menulis itu adalah suatu hal yang sulit sekali. Ya, memulai itu adalah sulit ya, karena kadang-kadang kita mikirnya terlalu panjang, ya, sehingga kita harus membuat sebuah strategi sebenarnya. Nah, yang perlu kita pertimbangkan itu adalah, kalau menurut saya, saya baca-baca adalah Kita sebaiknya itu menulis artikel dulu, baru kita memilih jurnalnya. Atau kita mau menulis jurnalnya dulu yang cocok kira-kira apa dengan topik yang kita miliki, baru kita menulis artikelnya. Nah ini ini dua hal yang uh, kadang-kadang merupakan style tersendiri bagi setiap penulis. Uh, memang ada beberapa referensi mengatakan uh, jangan menulis artikel dulu sebelum anda tahu jurnal. target Anda gitu. Jadi tentukan jurnal target Anda, kemudian pelajari ya, ketentuan-ketentuan yang berlaku di dalam jurnal itu. Sangi mulai detail sekali, mulai scope, aim ya dan sebagainya, cara-caranya enggak nulis-nulis ya sampai akhirnya enggak punya artikel. Gitu. Ini sangat sangat disayangkan sekali gitu ya. Sehingga 
ada pendapat lain bahwa sebaiknya orang nulis artikel dulu manuskrip buat dulu soal jurnal apa itu nanti gitu nah, menurut saya pribadi ini pengalaman saya ini adalah yang pertama ini saya sebaiknya menulis artikel ya apa yang saya peroleh dari penelitian ini saya tulis ya gitu. nulis itu adalah sesuatu yang yang apa namanya yang tadi sulit untuk memulai tapi saya paham dan saya alami sendiri apa yang disampaikan oleh dokter Isra tadi di dalam mau menulis itu terutama di hasil itu adalah eh, jangan membuat narasi dulu tapi tampilkan hasil-hasilnya tabel misalnya grafik dan sebagainya karena dari tabel dan grafik itu kan akhirnya bisa dibuat narasi jadi kalau saya pribadi eh, pengalaman adalah artikel saya buat dulu manuskrip saya buat dulu nah, kemudian baru mencari yang namanya uh, jurnal apa kira-kira yang cocok. Nah ini mungkin uh, prefer uh, preferensi ya tidak semua orang seperti itu tapi ini tadi saya katakan saya sering pengalaman begitu. Jadi pengalaman saya semacam itu. Yang penting artikel saya buat dalam format yang mungkin agak umum ya. Saya kira bapak ibu semua dan adik mahasiswa juga tahu ya konsep imrat yaitu introduction, method, result, and discussion. Gitu. Konsep itu dibuat aja secara umum ya nanti kalau misalnya dari jurnalnya ada format tersendiri kan tinggal merubah. Jadi eh, bagaimana kita bisa melangkah ya, kan? kalau kita tidak tahu strateginya sehingga kita harus memutuskan strategi mana yang kita akan gunakan sehingga kita langsung bisa berangkat pula gitu, kira-kira begitu. Nah, kemudian eh, selecting the right journal faktor to be consider, to consider. Jadi Memang ada beberapa mungkin yang perlu dipertimbangkan ya, di dalam apa namanya menseleksi sebuah jurnal karena topik saya adalah bukan menulis artikelnya tapi dalam memilih jurnalnya ya saya awali tadi dengan pesan-pesan penting dalam menulis artikel ya. kemudian eh, kalau kita mau memilih sebuah jurnal yang akan kita jadikan target untuk publikasi artikel kita maka ya memang bacalah sekilas ya, aim and scope ya kan? dan itu bisa mudah dibaca di websitenya. Misalnya about the journal gitu ya. IMS code sudah kelihatan di situ. Kemudian nah ini yang yang penting juga author guideline tadi ya. Author guideline ya. Di sini eh, kadang-kadang eh, ada jurnal yang sudah menyediakan manuskrip template-nya. Jadi template-nya sudah disediakan ya. Kalau enggak kadang-kadang kita harus mencoba mendownload salah satu artikel kalau bisa di-download ya kalau dia open access jurnal bisa di-download kemudian kita contoh ya kita pelajari kita contoh aja tetapi saya pernah mendapatkan manuskrip template dari UTM tadi yang apa jurnal of teknologi dari UTM tadi begitu detailnya apa apa manuskrip template-nya itu sampai judulnya itu harus huruf apa ukurannya berapa jaraknya berapa detail Ya, kemudian afiliasi, kemudian abstraknya sangat detail sekali itu ada, itu sangat sangat membantu sekali. Ya. Kemudian, eh, nah ini yang penting, apalagi buat mahasiswa ini sebagai persyaratan untuk ujian akhir misalnya, itu adalah time to publish. Ya. Jadi eh, beberapa referensi mengatakan jurnal yang baik itu minimal 4 bulan kita mendapat kabar. Kabar itu bukan kabar diterima, tapi kabar bahwa artikel anda sudah dikirim ke peer review gitu ya, ya sudah di, dikirim kepada peer review. Nah, kemudian sambil menunggu bisa sebulan dua bulan dan sebagainya. Nah untuk publish sendiri ini sangat bervariasi tergantung pada jurnal apa frekuensi frekuensi pak publikasinya. Nah, semakin sering itu biasanya semakin pendek walaupun bagus. Ya, tapi kalau jurnalnya itu publishnya itu dua kali setahun gitu ya mungkin antrinya bisa setahun dua tahun dan sebagainya. Seperti yang saya alami tadi itu dua kali setahun aja itu antrinya 10 bulan itu Q4 gitu. Nah, kemudian nah ini well indexed jadi pastikan bahwa jurnal itu juga terindeks dengan baik. Bisa dilihat juga jurnal impact faktornya. Gitu. Kemudian ya ini uh, pure online pressure. Jadi memang kadang-kadang ada jurnal yang baik, ya kan? jurnal yang baik, tetapi kalau kita cek itu banyak sekali kesalahan-kesalahan pengetikan dan sebagainya. Padahal itu jurnal uh, terindeks kopus tuh. Saya pernah mendapatkan itu. Tapi ya 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 memang masih Q4 sih. Ya, jadi kadang-kadang 
memang masih banyak kesalahan di dalam apa namanya penampilannya masuk permatnya. Nah kemudian yang penting juga ini nanti teman-teman uh, uh, mahasiswa khususnya untuk memenuhi persyaratan apa namanya ujian itu adalah acceptance rate. Jadi kira-kira probabilitas untuk diterima dari artikel di sebuah jurnal itu berapa nanti bisa dicek. Berapa persen dari uh, artikel yang disampaikan itu diterima nanti bisa dicek. Nah sebenarnya kalau secara detail uh, bapak ibu semua teman-teman mahasiswa itu banyak sekali sebenarnya. Tapi yang tadi adalah poin penting yang perlu saya sampaikan. Kira-kira adalah publishing frekuensi. Jadi frekuensi publishnya berapa kali? Semakin sering biasanya semakin cepat publikasinya. Kemudian <tuh> impact faktornya bisa dicek. Target audiennya, M score, rejection rate tadi atau acceptance rate, kemudian lead time, kemudian akses, open house, subscriber, jadi nanti berbayar rendah, kemudian prior publication, jadi ada beberapa jurnal yang melakukan prior publication, maksudnya begini, sebelum waktunya terbit, dia sudah tampil dulu sebagai kalau di Indonesia namanya adalah artikel in press namanya, seperti apa namanya di jurnal kesehatan lingkungan Indonesia saya melakukan nama namanya artikel impress jadi artikel artikel yang sudah di apa sudah di accepted itu bisa ditampilkan sebagai artikel inspired itu untuk membangun apa semangat dan motivasi motivasi dari uh, autor bahwa uh, pengelola itu punya komitmen ya, yang baik di dalam publikasi kemudian biaya publikasi dan juga tipe-tipe <tipa> publikasi Ya, jadi ada jurnal yang sifatnya berbayar, ada yang sifatnya free. Kalau berbayar itu biasanya apa namanya uh, open, ya, ada open open access. Tapi kalau yang apa namanya uh, yang plus, ya, ada uh, yang tidak bisa di, di apa namanya di diakses itu biasanya mereka menarik dari dari autornya begitu. Kemudian masalah citasi ya saya kira ini adalah sebenarnya adalah elemen-elemen yang perlu dipertimbangkan kalau kita mau menulis jurnal. Tapi kalau pertimbangan betul semuanya ini ya kira-kira kita nggak jadi-jadi menulis dan nggak jadi publikasi kira-kira begitu. Oleh karena itu perlu strategi. Bapak Ibu semuanya sebenarnya kalau kita sudah menulis artikel sebuah jurnal kita nggak perlu bingung mencari jurnal mana. Ya, artikel kita ini kita akan kita submit. Nah, di sini ada tool ya, tool to find the right journal. Sebenarnya ada tool ya, alat untuk menemukan jurnal yang cocok untuk artikel kita. Mulai dari ada Simago Journal Ranking SJR ya, yang sangat banyak sekali. Kemudian ada Kebels Directory of Publishing Opportunities juga ada. Kemudian LC Fire Journal Finder ini yang yang jadi catatan nanti salah satunya adalah nanti yang bisa kita praktekkan dan LC Fire Journal Finder ini adalah uh, sebuah tool ya, uh, yang bisa kita gunakan untuk mendapatkan jurnal yang bagus ya, yang bereputasi dan di dalam LC Fire jurnalnya semua terindeks opus gitu jadi sangat bagus sekali dan lengkap nanti lengkap itu dalam arti apa tadi tahu berapa rejection rate-nya, tahu match atau kecocokan daripada artikel kita, berapa impact faktornya, kemudian berapa pemberitahuan tadi, apa berita artikel Anda ini sudah dikirim ke reviewer itu berapa minggu kelihatan, kemudian publish-nya berapa bulan bisa terlihat di dalam super journal finder, nanti akan bisa kita praktekkan Kemudian ada yang lain, ada Unrefab Global Serial Directory, kemudian ada JCR atau Journal Citizen Report, tapi ini tidak selengkap seperti yang ada di LC Fear ini. Kemudian Google Scholar Metric, ini yang biasanya keluar bahasa Indonesia, bisa banyak. Ya Kalau Google Scholar Metric ini mungkin yang skopus di situ enggak begitu banyak. Tapi kalau yang LC Fear tadi, Journal Finder itu semuanya terindeks skopus. Gitu. <tuh> ya. Oleh karena itu sebenarnya apa modal kita kalau kita mau memilih memilih sebuah jurnal yang cocok tadi saya akan berikan salah satu contoh yang menggunakan jurnal finder tadi ya Elsevier jurnal finder tadi modal kita hanya tiga aja sebenarnya 
Jadi kita punya abstrak, di situ ada title of manuscript Anda. Maaf ada salah ketik sedikit. Uh, judul uh, artikel kita, kemudian abstrak kita dan ada keyword kita. Jadi kata kuncinya. Nah ini kalau ini kita punya, ini aja kita sudah bisa mendapatkan jurnal yang cocok kira-kira begitu. Nah, uh, nah ini adalah uh, kita bisa mencoba nanti teman-teman kalau yang apa namanya yang sudah punya manuskrip itu bisa mencoba. Nanti diketik aja di http jurnal finder uh, lcv .com itu. Nah, nanti ada tiga komponen yang bisa kita masukkan yaitu mulai dari judulnya, kemudian adalah abstraknya, kemudian adalah kata kuncinya. Kemudian nanti bisa memilih ya apa namanya uh, scope of jurnalnya di bidang head science, di bidang energi, di bidang teknologi dan sebagainya. Dan semua jurnal yang ada di jurnal finder yang dimiliki oleh Elsevier ini adalah semua jurnal ada terindeks Scopus begitu. Dan Anda langsung bisa melacak juga ya Scopus berapa, kemudian IF-nya berapa, kemudian dilihat coverage-nya berapa, coverage Scopus-nya. Apakah dari tahun berapa sampai tahun 2020, 2019 nanti akan bisa dilacak terus sampai sana. Sehingga kemungkinan kita akan tersesat itu kemungkinan kecil kalau menurut saya. Kalau kita menggunakan apa namanya jurnal finder ini gitu. Baik, Bapak Ibu sekalian, mari kita coba bagaimana demonstrasikan apa namanya mencari menseleksi atau mencari jurnal yang target yang cocok untuk sebuah artikel. Saya tidak akan demokan tapi saya berikan sajian sebuah video. Silahkan disaksikan dan nanti panjenengan semua bisa mencoba asal Anda punya abstrak misalnya sudah tidak bisa coba. <tuh> Hello everyone. So today in this video, I'm going to show you how to select the most appropriate journal for your research. Most appropriate LCBR journal. Before I before I show you that, I would like to show you our website, Research Hub. Here is our website link. So please check it out. Check the job section and the job section. You may find many jobs. So today I'm going to show you this tool, Elsevier Journal Finder tool, which helps you find the most appropriate journal on the Elsevier database for your article based on the title and the abstract of that. Now I'm going to show you how it works. So you can access it from here. I'll find out the Elsevier so What you have to do is actually very simple. You just have to copy the first title and abstract of so I'm going to show you three examples. One, this is a published paper of mine. Just for the, so I have the title and here is the abstract. Here, but it will just take care find the journal. Now it will give you the best match. Okay, so you can sort by match, by journal title, by impact. If you take care, now you see by impact. The lowest to highest, you can also make it highest to lowest. But I prefer the match one. So here again, just make the lowest to highest, go from highest to lowest. So here I see this journal would have been a great fit. One, but this isn't to minus something, but mine is a big one. So this one would be this one would have been a great fit. And this one for I see that uh, at least three of the journal. Yeah, yeah. Limit your search by this. This is the most um, most um, so for me the most relevant ones are social science. For you, depending on your article, it's one. So you just think. And I will click again. And still, I see these two journals. So we can also limit to open access journals. Also, if you want to publish, 
Terakhirnya saya teman semua ya. Semua teman-teman yang dulu di awal itu yang melakukan webinar laporan tapi ada ada ini. Laporannya enggak ada. Sometimes this is a problem. Sometimes kernels you will see here did not fit very well with your your article as well. Like in this case, I see any any this one will fit a bit, um, but most of them does not really fit. Well, shipping and fitness. Them are really about. So it, the, the, the limitation of this tool is that it only looks in the LCP. Limitation. And there could be some other channel. Anyway. It's a great tool, but let's see another thing. See the title here. Kirim mana nak kau? Dalam cerita apa narasi ya? This is a good match. These two journals are very good match. So here, also the great thing is that you see the size score, you see This is the first decision, on first submission, first decision time. Of okay, so you can choose between, you choose by looking at the speed of This one is very Submit within four weeks of your day. And you also see the acceptance rate of two person like this very high. Okay. And you also see the production speed. So after the article is accepted, how long it takes? And also you see the articles not embargo period. Embargo period is that like you can after your your article is published, you can share post main version of your article public but after the embargo period in this case it's 36 months for this journal 36 this journal it's been six months at uh, 24 months so it's a mix yeah often it's like it's a mix of 24 and, okay. and you will also see the open access fee so if you want to go for open access how much you have to pay this journal 1800 and if you find the journal where you want to submit your paper, you just click submit paper and it will take you to the Thank you very much for seeing this video. If you find it useful, please like and share. If you want me to make some more videos on the on different topics, please suggest in the comment section so I can. Thank you very much. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe. Bapak Ibu, mohon maaf tadi ada Pak Dekan masuk dan saya nggak bisa menolak Jadi suaranya masuk. Ya. <tuh> Baik, jadi itu salah satu tool yang bisa digunakan untuk select dari jurnal yang cocok Kan tadi di awal paling kiri itu kan ada match ya seberapa besar kecocokan dari artikel yang kita apa, abstrak yang kita 
input tadi dengan jurnal itu sendiri gitu. Nanti teman-teman dan kawan-kawan mahas, uh, mahasiswa juga teman-teman dosen bisa mencoba lagi uh, bagaimana caranya untuk mencari jurnal internasional yang bereputasi. Dan kemarin saya sudah coba memang yang masuk di Sivir Journal Finder ini semuanya adalah jurnal yang terindeks di Scopus gitu. Ya, jadi kira-kira aman mereka begitu. Saya kira begitu Mbak Novi ada kurang dan lebihnya mohon maaf yang sebesar-besarnya. Kira -kira, kita lihat, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih banyak Pak Nur atas uh, sharingnya. Uh, mungkin ada peserta yang ingin bertanya langsung atau sharing langsung kepada hmm. Pak Nur Jazuli di sini, kami persilahkan. Uh, saat ini peserta sudah bisa mengunmute sendiri ya, jadi uh, tidak perlu raise hand, silakan langsung unmute dan sebutkan nama asal instansinya, kemudian langsung saja jelaskan pertanyaannya seperti apa. Terima kasih, silakan peserta. Apakah ada yang ingin bertanya atau sharing atau membahas artikelnya mungkin? Mungkin saya Bu Novia. Ya. ya Pak Monggo. Ya, Mancing yang lain. Mancing. Saya pernah nulis artikel di mana metodologinya itu rumit banget memang. Karena metode statistiknya yang rumit. Kemudian setelah saya tulis, saya cek ulang. Kemudian saya mintakan baca orang lain. Kebetulan yang saya mintakan baca itu orang statistik. Jadi tidak bermasalah. Nah, tetapi begitu masuk ke jurnal, itu diberi komentar bahwa metode saya terlalu rumit. Orang nggak suka baca. Orang nggak suka baca metode yang terlalu rumit seperti ini. Nah mungkin Pak Nur punya pengalaman seperti ini. Apakah kita metodenya kita sederhanakan ataukah kalimat-kalimat saya yang justru terlalu matematis gitu. Jadi orang menangkapnya mungkin sulit. Pak Nur. Terima kasih Pak Farid. Jadi memang tadi saya juga punya pengalaman tapi bukan terkait dengan yang rumit ini. Ada aspek yang kadang suruh masukkan, ada aspek yang kadang tidak suruh menghilangkan gitu. Antar peer review itu berbeda memang. E, tapi ada sebuah masukan gitu. E, jadi dulu saya pernah menulis bahwa ethical clearance itu saya masukkan di bagian akhir dari metode. Gitu. Ada peer review satu itu suruh menghilangkan tidak perlu. Tapi ada peer review lain suruh masukkan gitu. Ya pada saat dilang, suruh menghilangkan saya hilangkan, secara, pada satu masukan saya masukkan. Keputusan ada di editorial, misalnya. Gitu. Nah, kemudian terkait dengan punya Pak Farid, memang uh, menurut saya coba merujuk pada guidance-nya, Pak. Uh, syukur kalau ada manuskrip template-nya. Apakah memang di guidance manuskrip template, terus di aspek metodologi ini, apakah memang minta secara detail atau tidak? Memang saya lihat beberapa jurnal itu, terutama jurnal yang di BMC itu ya, Biomedical Center itu biasanya mintanya detail sekali, tapi di jurnal-jurnal yang lainnya itu enggak juga gitu. Jadi memang uh, sebaiknya di, dirujuk kepada manuskrip template yang ada atau mencoba melihat artikel yang sudah dipublish sebelumnya. Ya, jadi kadang-kadang uh, yang menolak bukan peribu tapi juga bisa saja editorialnya karena keputusan terakhir itu ada di editorial. Gitu. Perifi itu kan hanya memberikan masukan ya dari sisi substansi gitu ya, tapi dari sisi apa namanya struktur dan sebagainya adalah itu lebih berwenang pada pada editorialnya gitu. Ya itulah seninya Pak Farid. Jadi kalau tulisan metode rumit kok ditolak ya karena anak sakit hati padahal itu benar gitu ya. Sama tadi sudah dua tahun diperbaiki ya. Uh, dua minggu bulan ditolak itu ya kadang-kadang sakit gitu ya. tapi itu pengalaman yang mungkin uh, tidak pernah terlupakan bagi kita sebagai autor ya, dalam proses publikasi di jurnal yang uh, cocok uh, dengan artikel kita mungkin itu Pak Farid yang bisa saya ya, mantan nun mana mantan nun di 
peserta yang lain silahkan bila ada yang ingin share. Saya harapkan nanti yang lain mencoba itu ya, terutama yang mahasiswa ini. Uh, kalau menggunakan Elsevier Journal Finder tadi, ketemunya masih jurnal yang terindeks Scopus atau yang uh, se -se -apa, se sejenisnya misalnya F Science gitu. Tapi kalau jurnal internasional biasa, terus masih S2 yang memang kewajibannya ada di jurnal internasional biasa ya, mungkin jangan menggunakan yang Elsevier tadi, Journal Finder bisa menggunakan yang lainnya misalnya tadi apa nah, CRC tadi ya jurnal report, report uh, citation tadi bisa digunakan ya. silahkan ini hanya sharing Baik, pengalaman apakah aja ada yang, ya. Ya. apakah ada yang mau bertanya lagi uh, untuk materi sudah saya upload di sini dan juga mohon untuk pada peserta jangan lupa untuk mengisi link ini juga Gitu, monggo yang mau bertanya silahkan. Ya, ini filenya dua-duanya sudah saya upload di sini. Silahkan kalau mau di-download. Baik, apakah tidak ada yang mau bertanya lagi? Sudah cukup? Baik, dari Pak Nur Jazuli ada lagi yang ingin disampaikan, Pak? Ya, uh, ini kan... Banyak mahasiswa yang ikut ya, S2, apalagi yang S3 ya. Barangkali S3 ya memang harus jurnal internasional berimputasi, tapi kalau S2 kan targetnya hanya minimal ada jurnal eh, internasional atau jurnal nasional akreditasi Sinta 4 kalau, kalau S2 gitu ya. Eh, barangkali pesan saya eh, kalau ke jurnal, internasional, eh, jurnal nasional Sinta pun, kadang-kadang prosesnya kan lama sekali ya. ya prosesnya juga masih lama bisa tiga bulan empat bulan enam bulan ya bahkan di jurnal saya itu sudah satu tahun lebih untuk bisa publish itu ya teman-teman mahasiswa yang S2 saya persilahkan kalau bisa di jurnal internasional ya syukur kalau yang ke internasional yang berimutasi itu aja mbak pesan saya mungkin untuk mahasiswa terutama terima kasih baik Bila sudah tidak ada yang mau ditanyakan lagi, maka uh, kita akhiri, cukupkan, kita cukupkan acara kita sampai di sini. Terima kasih banyak kepada pembicara yang sudah berbagi ilmu, pengalaman, dan juga tips-tipsnya dalam penulisan artikel bereputasi internasional pada acara hari ini. Uh, saya ingatkan sekali lagi, jangan lupa kepada para peserta untuk uh, mengisi link daftar hadir yang sudah kami masukkan ke dalam kolom chat, karena untuk uh, mendapatkan e-sertifikat, Anda harus mengisi link tersebut. Baik, uh, semoga acara ini sangat bermanfaat untuk kita semua. Mohon maaf apabila ada kesalahan dan juga uh, kekurangan pada acara ini. Terima kasih banyak sudah mengikuti acara ini dari awal sampai akhir. Uh, sampai jumpa di acara selanjutnya. Saya akhiri. Selamat sore. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih banyak Pak Nur. Ya, sama-sama. Terima kasih Pak Nur, Pak Farid, dan teman-teman semua. Mahasiswa maupun teman-teman dosen. Mudah-mudahan bermanfaat untuk meningkatkan kinerja mahasiswa maupun kinerja dosen. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.